Today I was reading this powerful sermon from Charles Spurgeon. It's based on the scripture from Romans 2.16. The day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. This verse follows chapter 1 where Paul held nothing back concerning the hideous vices of the heathen. He knew he was writing both for his age and the ages to come. He called it my gospel, not that he was the author of it, but he received it from Christ himself and regarded himself so responsibly put in trust with it that he could not disown it for an instant. Spurgeon wrote, As for myself, looking at the matter afresh amidst all the filthiness which I see in the world at this day, I lay hold upon the pure and blessed word of God and call it all the more earnestly my gospel, mine in life and mine in death, mine against all comers, mine forever, God helping me with emphasis, my gospel. This message explains in great vivid detail the coming judgment on us all if we regard secret sins. There are no secret sins with our Father God. I would encourage you to read the whole sermon. I've included the link below. I will now read the ending segment for you. I pray it blesses and challenges you. According to my gospel, saith Paul, and he meant that the judgment is an essential part of the gospel creed. If I had to sum up the gospel, I should have to tell you certain facts. Jesus, the Son of God, became man. He was born of the Virgin Mary, lived a perfect life, was falsely accused of men, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, from whence he shall also come to judge the quick and the dead. This is one of the elementary truths of our gospel. We believe in the resurrection of the dead the final judgment, and the life everlasting. The judgment is according to our gospel, and in times of righteous indignation, its terrible significance seemeth a very gospel to the pure in heart. I mean this. I have read this and that concerning oppression, slavery, and treading down of the poor, and the shedding of blood, and I have rejoiced that there is a righteous judge. I have read of secret wickedness among the rich men of this city, and I have said within myself, thank God there will be a judgment day. Thousands of men have been hanged for much less crimes than those which now disgrace gentlemen whose names are on the lips of rank and beauty. Ah me, how heavy is our heart as we think of it. It has come like a gospel to us that the Lord will be revealed in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The secret wickedness of London cannot go on forever. Even they that love men best and most desire salvation for them cannot but cry to God, how long, how long, great God, wilt thou forever endure this? God hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world. And we sigh and cry until it shall end the reign of wickedness and give rest to the oppressed. Brethren, we must preach the coming of the Lord and preach it somewhat more than we have done because it is the driving power of the gospel. Too many have kept back these truths and thus the bone has been taken out of the arm of the gospel. Its point has been broken. Its edge has been blunted. The doctrine of judgment to come is the power by which men are to be aroused. There is another life. The Lord will come a second time. Judgment will arrive. The wrath of God will be revealed. Where this is not preached, I am bold to say the gospel is not preached. It is absolutely necessary to the preaching of the gospel of Christ that men be warned as to what will happen if they continue in their sins. Ho, ho, Sir Surgeon, you are too delicate to tell the man he is ill. You hope to heal the sick without their knowing it. You therefore flatter them, and what happens? They laugh at you. They dance upon their own graves. At last they die. Your delicacy is cruelty. Your flatteries are poisons. 
You are a murderer. Shall we keep men in a fool's paradise? Shall we lull them into soft slumbers from which they will awake in hell? Are we to become helpers of their damnation by our smooth speeches? In the name of God, we will not. It becomes every true minister of Christ to cry aloud and spare not. For God hath set a day in which he will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. As surely as Paul's gospel was true, the judgment will come. Wherefore, flee to Jesus this day, O sinners. O ye saints, come, hide yourselves again beneath the crimson canopy of the atoning sacrifice, that you may be now ready to welcome your descending Lord and escort him to his judgment seat. O my hearers, may God bless you for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen.